A Karen teacher accuses me of not paying attention in class and pulls my hearing aids out of my ears, claiming they're earbuds. Without them, I can barely hear anything. Here's what happened when I reported her to the principal and my family decided to take legal action. Subscribe to You're the Jerk and turn on notifications if you like videos like these. I'm a 17-year-old guy, and I'm currently in my senior year of high school. I have a disability that affects my hearing and have been wearing hearing aids for as long as I can remember. It's not something that defines me, but it definitely affects my everyday life. I was born with a congenital hearing loss. My hearing aids are not just a piece of technology, they're a part of me. They help me to hear the world around me, and without them, I'm lost. One day, in the middle of class, my teacher, let's call her Karen, confronts me and accuses me of not paying attention and listening to music. I will admit, I wasn't paying attention, but accusing me of listening to music with my earbuds is too far. Here's how the dialogue went down. Hey, what do you think you're doing? She asked, walking over to my desk. Huh? I said, looking up at her. I said, what do you think you're doing? She repeated, her voice rising. I'm not doing anything, I said, confused. Don't play dumb with me, Karen snapped. I can see that you're listening to music. Take those earbuds out right now. I looked down at the hearing aids in my ear, completely flabbergasted. These aren't earbuds, I tried to explain. They're hearing aids. I literally need them to hear you. It's my human right to have them, Karen rolled her eyes. Oh, please. I know kids these days are addicted to music. You're just trying to use them as an excuse to listen to your tunes instead of paying attention in class. No, I swear, they're hearing aids, I said, getting more and more frustrated by the second. Karen glared at me. Take them out, she ordered. What? No, I said, holding my hands up defensively. I need them to hear you. I said take them out, Karen repeated, her voice getting louder. I can't, I said, my voice shaking. Please just believe me, they're hearing aids. I need them to hear you. It's my right to have them. Karen didn't seem to care. She walked over to me and snatched the hearing aids out of my ears. Luckily, this didn't cause much damage to my ear canals, as they can easily be disconnected with enough force, causing me to yelp in pain. So at this point, I couldn't hear shit. I could faintly hear voices, and I heard the Karen teacher yelping something like, I'm keeping these until the end of class. Her face was twisted with anger. I knew that I wouldn't be able to hear anything for the rest of class, and the thought of that terrified me. I stood up abruptly, knocking my desk over in the process, and ran out of the classroom, leaving Karen behind. I didn't even bother to grab my backpack or any of my belongings. All I cared about was getting my hearing aids back. I ran down the hallway, barely able to hear my own footsteps. I burst into the principal's office, panting and out of breath. The principal looked up at me, surprised to see me there, and probably said something along the lines of, What's going on? I tried to explain, but it was difficult. Without my hearing aids, I struggled to communicate effectively. Like, speaking without auditorial perception is kind of challenging, actually. The principal looked at me with concern and quickly realized what had happened. She was nodding her head and looked furious and gave me the look of, let me see what I can do. She immediately got up from her desk and ran down the hallway, looking for Karen. I just stood there. Finally, the principal returned, holding my hearing aids in her hand. I quickly connected them back into my ear, and the sound flooded back in. It was overwhelming, but I was grateful to have my hearing back. I could hear the principal's voice more clearly now, and I could tell that she was angry. I can't believe that this happened, the principal said, shaking her head. I'm going to have a talk with Karen right now. The principal stormed out of the office, and I followed behind her, still feeling a little disoriented. We quickly found Karen in her classroom, and the principal confronted her. What's going on? Karen asked innocently. You know exactly what's going on, the principal said, her voice rising. You just violated this student's rights. You can't just take away their hearing aids like that. I was just trying to teach him a lesson, Karen said, trying to defend herself. Are you serious right now? Teach him a lesson? Are you insane? You're meant to teach history, not commit crimes, the principal said firmly. Karen didn't seem to understand the gravity of what had happened. I'm sorry, I don't understand, she said, but it was clear that she wasn't really sorry at all. The principal looked at her with a stern expression. This is not acceptable. Pack up and go home right now. I'll talk with you later. She said she would investigate the case and make sure that something like this would never happen again. Three days later, the word spread that Karen had been fired. I was relieved to hear the news. It was a small victory, but it meant a lot to me. I couldn't believe that Karen had been so ignorant and disrespectful to me. It was good to know that she wouldn't be able to hurt anyone else in the same way. My parents were furious when I told them about what happened at school that day. They knew that what had happened was a violation of my rights as a student with a disability. A quick Google search shows that whatever this bitch did was a violation of the Disabilities Act. My mom decided to contact a lawyer to seek legal advice. And that brings us to today. We're going to have a meeting with a lawyer and discuss our options. I believe I can sue the living shit out of this bitch and she deserves it. Oh my goodness. Can you believe what happened to OP? 
I mean, seriously, what kind of teacher thinks it's okay to take away someone's hearing aids like that? That Karen is beyond crazy. I can't even imagine what it must have been like for OP to not be able to hear anything for the rest of class. And then, having to run all the way to the principal's office to get their hearing aids back? It's like something out of a movie. But honestly, it's not even funny. This kind of behavior is unacceptable, especially from someone who is supposed to be a role model and educator. I'm so glad that the principal took swift action and that Karen was fired. And the fact that OP's family is seeking legal advice just shows how serious this is. Nobody should have to go through something like this, and I really hope that Karen learns her lesson and that justice is served. What do you guys think about this crazy situation? Have you ever had a run-in with a Karen like this? Let me know your thoughts below. Me personally, I would have slapped that teacher. My Karen aunt tries to cheat her own family out of their rightful inheritance and ruins a funeral, only to end up living in a caravan with no money, no home, and no one to turn to. Here's how it all went down. My aunt was one of two kids my grandparents had. My mother was the solar opposite to my aunt. She worked from the age of 12 in my grandfather's shop, never asked for anything, and eventually managed to start her own business. My aunt never held down a job till the age of 26, was constantly stealing from her parents, and was constantly in trouble. Despite this, my aunt was spoiled by my grandmother, and so were her kids. She had three kids from three different men, and her first husband was not one of them, if you know what I mean. Didn't matter what my aunt or her kids did, my grandmother would always jump to their defense. She never had time for my mom and her kids, unless it was to get something from us. The only reason my mom would visit her was because she loved my grandfather. My grandfather passed away in 2004, and a few months after my nan decided to write up a new will. My mother and my aunt were both present for it when she signed it, so they knew what was in it. It made it so that when she passed away, her home would be sold, and the money split 25% each to my mom and aunt, and the remaining 50% would go evenly to the grandkids. At the time, the home was worth more than 500,000 pounds, so it would be a nice little inheritance, but nothing life-changing. In 2010, my mom died after an accident and did not have a current will in place. As she no longer had her business and was renting a house, she didn't have anything of much monetary value. The only thing she was concerned about was what would be done at her funeral should she have passed away, but had told me everything she wanted. The music, the flowers, the coffin color, and even what people were to wear at the funeral. She wanted people to wear bright warm colors. So when she passed, my aunt and nan took over all the arrangements and tried to undo all the things I'd told them. The songs were going to be songs I knew mum didn't like. The flowers were all the wrong colors, and they picked a hideous coffin. With the help of my siblings, we were able to change a few of the things back to what they were supposed to be. But the coffin couldn't be changes for some reason, and my nan refused to let people come dressed as clowns. So it was all black. It was frustrating. After the funeral, my nan had her will changed. My siblings and I were told by our aunt that she didn't have any involvement with the writing of the will, and our nan told us that she changed it so that mum's share would go to her kids instead. All good, we thought. After mum passed away, my nan just stopped talking about my mum. At first, we thought it was because she was still recovering from losing her daughter, but even five years after mum passed, she still wouldn't talk about her. Even if you brought up a story about mum, nan would very obviously try and change the subject, usually about how hard my aunt and her shitty kids had it. And if you went to talk to her about your own problems, she would somehow bring it back to my aunt. I had suffered a mental breakdown after my mom's death, so you can imagine how much it hurt to hear, well, X has had it so much worse. In 2016, my nan passed away. She had written down what she wanted to be done for her funeral, and it was basically all the same thing she had picked out for my mom's funeral, even the music to be played. I don't know why she tried to have a dress rehearsal funeral using my mom as the stand-in, but it was obvious that's what she was trying to do. So after a couple of months, our siblings and I were waiting to hear about the will reading, and my aunt kept telling me, oh, it'll be another month before we can do the reading. I didn't mind. I wasn't fussed about the money, to be honest. But my oldest brother was hoping to use the money to pay for a honeymoon for him and his then fiance. And my younger brother was about to start uni, so it would be a hell of a help. Eventually, my dad bumped into the solicitor my grandmother had used to deal with her will and asked what was happening. The solicitor let slip that the will had already been read and that it left everything to my aunt. When my dad questioned this, the solicitor told him that my aunt had been present when the will was written, despite promising that she had nothing to do with it. When confronted, my aunt initially tried to deny, but eventually admitted to lying to all of us. She showed us the will, and it confirmed what we already knew. The house and all its contents were now my aunt's. This included my granddad's war medals. 
he fought in the Second World War. When I told her that he had promised them to me before he died, she said, Well, unless you have it in writing, you will have nothing in this house. Anyway, I already gave them to Clive. My heart sank. Clive, not his real name Obbs, was her eldest son, and the dictionary definition of a fuck-up. He'd been in and out of prison for stealing and dealing drugs. I knew that the moment that prick had got his hands on my granddad's medals, they would have been sold off. We looked into taking her to court over the will, but everyone we spoke to said that we probably wouldn't get anything out of it. She immediately put the house up for sale at close to 750,000 pounds. She had pissed off too many people in our town, so she was going to sell the house and move closer to her daughter, who lives in a big city. An offer was made on the house, and she put down a deposit on a house near the big city, and I thought that was that. Here's where karma comes into play. The people who wanted my nan's house had a survey done on the house to see if there were issues, and oh boy were there. Turns out that the land the house was built on way too soft for the type of house it was, and it was sinking. It has sunk about 2 cm in the 40 plus years my nan and granddad had lived there, but the sinking was accelerating to 1 cm per year. This meant that within the next three years the house would need some serious work, or be knocked down. The new value of the house? 60,000 pounds. The buyers immediately pulled out, having not even put down a deposit. She couldn't buy her new house, but still had to pay the deposit on it. And while this was happening, she let Clive move in with her into her house that she rented from the council. He wasn't allowed to live in any of the council houses because he had trashed every single one he'd ever been given. Someone reported this, and she was kicked out of her home. She was forced to move into my nan's old home as she couldn't live anywhere else. So there she is, living in a crumbling house with her, her shithead son and her partner. She was stuck there for two years. Every time I saw her, she would try and start talking to me, and I would just ignore her and walk off. One time, as I was walking away, she screamed, Your mother deserved to die for having a retard like you. In the middle of a busy street, someone reported her to the police, and she had an official warning from them and was ridiculed on Facebook. Every time I saw her after that, she looked more and more miserable. Eventually, she sold the house for something like 85,000 pounds and moved in with her daughter in the big city. I lost contact with her and her kids after this. I thought karma had been issued. Oh, but karma still wasn't done with her. I bumped into one of her former friends and she told me what happened after she left our town. She moved into her daughter's home, let's call her Sue, but they only had a three-bedroom house and three kids. My aunt and her partner had to live in the smallest room in the house while my aunt looked for a job and a home to rent. Even with 85,000 pounds, she couldn't afford a home anywhere. After about a month, my aunt's partner ran off after emptying her account. She was left stranded in Sue's house, not contributing anything because all the money she makes goes into bingo. Eventually, Sue and my aunt get into a screaming match, and my aunt said something along the lines of, I should have aborted you. Sue immediately kicked her out of her house. So there's my aunt, in a city where she knows nobody, no money, no home, and the last bridge she had a smoldering wreck. Last anyone has heard, she was living in a caravan in the roughest part of the city, and she can no longer work because she's suffering early onset arthritis and can no longer move her hands. I know I shouldn't get joy out of something like this happening to another person, but it does bring me some peace as to what happened. Oh my gosh, this story is absolutely insane. The Karen in this story is next level crazy. Can you imagine living a life like that? It's like something straight out of a soap opera. It's crazy to think that someone can be so spoiled and entitled that they would treat their own family so badly. The fact that the aunt stole from her own parents and was constantly in trouble is just mind-boggling. And the fact that the grandmother would always jump to her defense, no matter what she did, is just ridiculous. But the real craziness started when the will was changed. The fact that the aunt and grandmother would go to such lengths to undo all the things that the OP's mother had requested for her funeral is just despicable. And the fact that the grandmother tried to have a dress rehearsal funeral using the OP's mother as a stand-in is just beyond words. But the ultimate karma came when the house that the aunt inherited turned out to be sinking and the buyers pulled out. The fact that she had to live in a crumbling house with her shithead son and her partner is just hilarious. And the fact that she sold the house for a fraction of what it was worth is just the cherry on top. I can't even imagine what it must be like to live a life like that. It's like something straight out of a movie. But at the same time, it's kind of satisfying to see someone who has done so much wrong get their comeuppance. Anyways, enough of that. You should watch the video on screen where OP's entitled family forces him out of his own house to give it to his sister. Yeah, that's just illegal, I guess.